So, uh, how many here like going to the doctor? <laughs> Not only the weight, I hate the weight, you know. Um, and then you get to hear the wonderful things that they get to say to you and the suggestions. So chocolate is one of my weaknesses, especially dark chocolate. Um, I, I can buy a bar like this and eat it like in 10 minutes. Um, it's just one of my, my comfort foods. So in the book, the chapter, it talks about barcodes. And you'll understand where this is going in a little bit. But So what if I told my doctor, I promise you, I'm gonna eat more French cut green beans. <laughs> but I'm gonna take this UPC off. And we're gonna put it on a chocolate bar. <laughs> See, changing the UPC doesn't cut it, right? It's still chocolate. So we'll we'll talk more about that. Lord, um, continue to be with us while we're here. Let your spirit move however you see fit. We ask you to just uh, allow us to let you touch our hearts and our minds through the rest of the service, the scripture, the music. Uh, Lord, I, Lord, I ask you to just let my, my words be pleasing to you. Uh, in your name we pray. So the, the chapter for the book today is, is actually called Hungry for God. So there's a few scriptures that I, I kind of wanted to that is pieced together uh, in this, this chapter. And Matthew 5, 6 is happy are the people who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, because they will be fed until they are full. Psalm 107, 9, because God satisfied the one who was parched and thirst, and he filled up the hungry with good things. Jesus replied, I am the bread. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So if you were visiting a Methodist church many, many years ago, it wouldn't look like this. It would be an open air, and chances are there was uh, a lay person that was speaking. So it looks a lot different than what it did, or than what it does now. They had a lot of small groups, which I think is important. When, when I was at camp, there were so many small groups that I got lost. <laughs> we, we had cabin small groups, we had the whole campus small groups, and I think, I think camp programming realized how important small groups are. But the small groups allows you to build closer relationships to people and to God as you're, you're studying, whatever it is you're studying. There were real people, just like now, who had their issues, who had hopes and dreams, but they also had struggles. These were the same people that might have been speaking. But the primary requirement for practicing is the longing, uh, for practicing your faith, faith is the longing for God. To know him more fully and to have a deeper relationship with him. So, my question is are you guys hungry? Because we can be misled when we hear that Jesus will never hunger again or thirst again. Well, that's because he filled our soul. But we can be hungry to know God better. So what does it mean to have a relationship with God? Well, what does our relationships look like together with each other? Who here texts a family member 
like once a day. How about phone calls? Emails? Do you think that makes your relationship stronger with them? Yeah. But it takes the act of of the two-way street of, of you reaching out to them and them responding. And that is what the relationship with God should look to look like for us as well. We should be able to feel comfortable calling on him with our our deepest concerns, our doubt, our hurt, just like you would a friend. And we go on to uh, the relationships are not just one-time encounters. They have to be built over time. The person I mentioned, Doyle, I've known him for probably maybe 20 years. And for him to feel comfortable enough to come to me and ask me some very deep questions about religion, that's where we got after communicating for so long. Because it didn't just start with, I want to get baptized. It started with, when I pray, who do I pray to, God or Jesus? These are the kind of questions he asked. Do you believe in, in evil spirits? What's the difference between sprinkling baptism and dunking baptism? There was a lot of things that we covered. Then we got to the point where he said, I want to get baptized. It was a relationship that developed over those couple years, many years, that allowed us to get to that point about faith. And being hungry is more so about wanting to know God better. One of the things that, uh, that I get asked all the time when I go in front of our uh, district committee of ministry is what do you do, what do you do for your soul? What, how do you focus on growing? And to me, for me personally, the entire process of getting prepared for Sunday is what helps me grow. Because you have to pray on it, you have to read the scripture, you have to figure out where you, where God wants you to go in the scripture. And then the light bulb comes on and, and you're like, whoa, that's, I get it now. That's where, where we're going this Sunday. And you all know that God can tell you this is where you're going on Tuesday and then Saturday night tell you we've changed our mind. But that's the hunger, the willingness to be open to, to being that close to God. To look to Him in Scripture. They used to uh, call uh, the beginning of a relationship with God the awakening. It's the point in our life when we realize that we will have a constant battle with sin. And the only person that can help us with that is God. Again, the relationship with God. So we become awakened where we accept God into our heart. That's not the end of it. And then we move on to, to prayer scripture, journaling, and all those things can be a part of your growth with God. And we have to realize that our, our forgiveness that we talk about many times is a gift from God. Like a, a friend giving you a loving gift. There's no catch. There's no, you bought me lunch Tuesday, so I gotta buy you lunch Saturday. There's no need for that. It was a gift. And he wants to help us with that battle of sin and living in the good and the bad. When I think of God, I think, and this is just me, everybody has a different thought process to help them. But 
understand their relationship with God. But I look at, at God as, as almost a parent figure, a father. You hear that many times, father. Who is it when you're little that your heart was broken, that you ran to? Your parents. Who was it that, that directed you when you needed to be directed a different, uh, a different way? It was your parents. Who was it that, in my case, when I did something wrong, I disappointed my parents. And I think that for me, the battle with sin, I feel like I disappoint God when I sin. It's the same relationship. The nurturing, the, the sternness of the love, And we all know, being Methodist, about justification and sanctifying grace. And we know, because we've heard it many times, about how it's a constant rotation between the two. Because as much as we want to work towards sanctification and become more Christ-like, we're human, we're not Christ, and we're going to have our setback. So the justification comes back again. God, I'm not perfect. I messed up. I need your help. I need your guidance. I need your love. And you start moving forward again. It's a hunger for God. And then they quote, they talk in the book about uh, this, this scripture you all probably get tired of hearing from. But it's Matthew 22, 37 through 39. He replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as yourself, as you love yourself. The love that we strive for. love that our love for God needs to continue to grow. It needs to be nurtured like a plant. It needs to be watered. So like we talk about being hungry, we want to be hungry for that next scripture that changes our heart. That next prayer that's answered by God. That next God moment that you can go and tell somebody. It's about growing. John Wesley says this, when you have attained a measure of perfect love, when God has enabled you to love him with all your heart and with all your soul, think of not resting there. Therefore, the voice of God to the children of God is go forward. We can stand still and know that we are loved by God. But that's not the point. The point is our relationship with God needs to grow. So a couple of questions that are in the book that I want to have you think about. How does knowing God differ from knowing about God? We can know God. A lot of people know God. But when you're hungry to know more, you want to know about God. So back to the candy bar and the green beans. can't make a dark chocolate candy bar green beans by just changing the UPC code, right? You can't change it by just putting a label on it. We 
can't change our lives or others' lives when we just throw a Christian label on ourselves. We have to be able to know what we're talking about. We have to be able to know that we are growing each day through the good and the bad. Slapping a label of Christianity on yourself doesn't mean a thing if you can't do what Jesus points out as the two greatest commandments. That is our thing. Our hunger will take us where we need to go. It will help us grow closer to God and it will not only improve, we can be a can of green beans, but we're going to stand there and be proud of a can of green beans because that's who we are and that's the way we live. But we can't just label ourselves Christians and not hunger for God. <laughs> we have to want to grow. That's what he wants from us. Think about, think about all the times that the, the disciples were with God or with Jesus and they did so many silly things or they doubted. And Jesus pointed out, I taught you this. You know this. This is what I want you to remember. So let's not call ourselves, let's not be comfortable just putting the label on saying that we are Christian. Let us be able to stand up, be proud, know that we are loved by God, and we are hungry to be loved deeper each day by Him. And we want to use that love that we feel from him to say, I have an amazing story and I want to tell you. Think about my friend Will. If he were to come to me and ask me a bunch of different questions about, about being Christian or, or religious, and I just said, here are your answers, left it at that. I don't know where, I'm, I'm not a magic worker, maybe God would have took him elsewhere to seek out being baptized. But what would have happened if I would have just answered his questions and forgot about the relationship part? One of the questions, I'll, I'll close on this note, one of the questions that he asked me because many of us hear this, what is the difference between believing and being religious? And I said, well, in my point of view, I start that because my opinion is not the only right one. It's not even right sometimes. But my opinion is, believing is knowing that you Accept that God is your Savior, and he, he is your Savior in your relationship with Him, and I believe in Him. Religious is where it gets complicated. Religious is when you start getting into denominations, and you start getting into rules, and you start getting into their rules, and our rules, and we make believing so complicated that nobody wants to do, have to do anything with religion. Is it because we only just switched out the UPC codes and said we're Christians? <laughs> I hope not. I hope it's because we're learning and we have a lot more to do for ourselves and for others. Will it happen overnight? No. Will you trust?
trust that happens? You should. And can God make it happen? Absolutely. Because for no matter what the label is you put on yourself, God knows you. And he knows your heart. So let us continue to learn what it means to be hungry and to want more of God.